has Dick Cheney seen the movie, and what's his reaction if he has? Uh, he has seen the film. Uh, we went out, uh, Trevor and I went and screened it for him, uh, and uh, uh, it was, a, a, as you can imagine, a fascinating experience. It's always a part of uh, uh, my process, every film I've made, uh, screening for the subject. Uh, I'm not going to speak on his behalf, being the former vice president. I know people are trying to get him to respond and certainly look forward to him putting it in his own words, but we definitely had one of uh, one of the more interesting and engaging and ex you know even I'd say exciting conversations that I've had, not just about this film but about anything. Hey, you got here. It's a question to the director, but also to the writer. Uh, it's a, and it's a serious question. It's a very chilling historical portrait that turned America. Um, and you show a vice president who throughout his career was willing to lie to get what he wanted done because he thought he was right. So my question is, I sit here watching him. He seems like a classic sociopath, having no feelings about the consequences of his actions because he believes he's right. Do you, did you, how do you feel about my seeing your film in that particular way? The, the gentleman, uh, after viewing the film, got the feeling that Dick Cheney is a sociopath. <laughs> and he is asking both the directors and the writer how they feel about his reaction. Well, um, there are a number of things I want to say. One is that I think that uh, uh, people are going to have a wide range of reactions to him and to the film. And um, I don't know you, but I suspect that um, uh, some of those opinions were formed prior to seeing the film. Um, and that's what happens when you make a film like this and when you have a subject like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only are this, are this tonight's screening and this week's screening and this year's screenings of this film and airing of this film going to have a wide range of reactions, but I think for years to come, and as the Cheney vice presidency and career recede into history, reactions will vary uh, with time. And, and we certainly found that with other political films, the War Room, Perfect Candidate, that I've been involved with. Um, but I do think that the question of conviction that you are hitting upon is, is certainly central to what this film is about, and also central to the question of what we want in our leaders and what makes a democracy work. And when is conviction a, a vital, necessary engine of successful democracy? Conviction, for instance, as opposed to not believing in anything except getting reelected, making more money, serving your lobbyists, stopping the other side. And when is conviction something else? When does it go to demagoguery? When does it become dangerous? And that's a thing, that's a question I think we all have to answer for ourselves as citizens, but it's certainly one that as the directors, as the writers, we need to be raising in this film. Thank you.
and about the hard truth of politics itself. change a bit over the course of making the film. Um, I don't know that my views about what he did while he was in office uh, changed. And one of the things I, I was certainly struck by, and again, this is a, this, this goes to the heart of the, of the complication in these matters, is that Cheney demonstrates a number of virtues that I think in the abstract we would identify as uh, things we want in our leaders. Fierce intellect, uh, uh, a loyalty, a, 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 you know, a, a, a loyalty that would lead him to jeopardize his relationship with the president of the United States, who he feels was disloyal. Um, conviction, passion, patriotism—all of these things—and uh, and yet, those who disagree with him don't recognize those as virtues. Again, when do, when are they good for what we want in our leaders? When are they not? That had that was something that struck me most powerfully when I was interviewing him because because you're you're right. He 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 believes that he was doing what he was doing for the for the good of America, and he believes it even more so today than ever before. Mm. Gentlemen, all the way in the back. You know, we, we uh, the question was, is there a reason we didn't cover his, his family life? Uh, uh, he, his daughter has come out as a lesbian, uh, and, uh, and, and we did speak to him about it, and there is a, you know, there's a four-hour version of this movie that's, uh, that's really good, uh, but, you know, this is, this is, you have to make choices, and uh, we interviewed every member of his family. They, he was, again, they were generous with their time in, in, in terms of agreeing to sit for interviews. Um, but as, you know, it is just an example of a filmmaking process, this, this story is not about his family life. This story is about his career and his political life. And while that segment in and of itself is very compelling and will be compelling on the DVD extras, um, it's, it's, as part of this film, it detracted me, decided ultimately not to include it. The gentleman all the way in the back there in the middle. Yeah, I, I, I think you do a great service to yourself and the public by choosing only the mildest criticism of his actions during the various political crises and not pointing out that this megalomaniac is committing treason. This is not some kind of political difference. He is undermining the presidency, he's undermining Congress, he's acting against the law. These are not admirable qualities in a leader, except maybe Mussolini or Hitler. Mm. choices in and the four-hour version and this version 
Um, I was struck by the decision to omit the Ashcroft hospital room scene, which would seem to be, you go pretty far on that story and then that stops, and that seems to be a really pivotal moment illustrating some of the things that we're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, it's a, the, the question is there. there there's a there's a, 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 a not unknown moment where uh, where uh, um, there's a visit to uh, Attorney General Ashcroft in the hospital. Uh, choices are made for different reasons. There are characters, there are, there, there are key players in that sequence, for instance, uh, uh, to introduce them into the film for that moment only ends up to try, you know. Is is that in your four hour version? Uh, there's reference to it uh, that may be in the four hour and 20 minute version. <laughs> uh, the 20 minutes are all about getting there. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's complicated stuff. This is, this is also not just a story that, like, first of all, this is not, this film is not intended to put Vice President Cheney on trial. Obviously, this is a film that examines what we believe is the single most, arguably the single most uh, influential non-presidential figure, this, a political figure this country has ever known. And to examine it with an eye towards history and a, and a, and a, and a sense of perspective on his entire career. Um, so, so the goal is not to be comprehensive. There's so many details and Cheney observers that, you know, there are volumes written and there should be many films made. This is, uh, this is one of them that will examine a narrative of a man whose worldview was formed a certain way, uh, who, uh, whose career rose a certain way, whose relationships, key relationships, impacted him a certain way, who managed to uh, get himself into a position of enormous power at a critical moment in American and world history, who had a huge impact on our country, who we are, and our domestic and international policies. And, um, and who, in spite of the fact that the, I dare say, the entire world changed around him, uh, did not change with it. And this is the story that we tell. So we just have time for two more questions. So we're going to go to this lady here and then this gentleman here. So.